You're watching True Crime Coverage with Angela Renee. Hit that like button, subscribe, and hit that bell to get notified. Let's get started. Hey guys, today I'll be covering the ongoing investigation into the mysterious death of Jelani Day. First, I'm going to provide you guys with a bit of background information regarding Jelani Day. Then, I'll provide you with a timeline of the case. I'll also cover the organ harvesting claims. And then after that, I'll follow up with the updates concerning the case. In June 1996, Carmen and Save Day welcomed their fourth child into the world, Jelani. He was the fourth of five children and the youngest of his parents, three sons. The days taught their children the value of perseverance and achievement. Jelani was a 25-year-old graduate student attending Illinois State University, ISU, to get his master's degree in speech pathology. He wanted to become Dr. Jelani Day. He was a member of the fraternity Omega Psi Phi and was very active on campus. Jelani enjoyed traveling, loved his family and his friends, and he had purpose in life. Jelani's father had cancer and Jelani was a bone marrow match for his dad. He was excited and looking forward to helping him. So guys, now I'm gonna break down the timeline of the case. Jelani Day is last seen entering the Beyond Hello Cannabis Dispensary on Veterans Parkway in Bloomington, Illinois. A security camera image places him there at about 9.15 a.m. Authorities released a security camera image of Jelani at 7.20 a.m. at ISU's Bone Student Center. Jelani's family reports him missing to the police. His family said that they last talked to him on August 23rd. Furthermore, Jelani had not attended a meeting that he scheduled with his professor. Jelani's white 2010 Chrysler 300 is found in a wooded area in Peru, about 60 miles north of Bloomington. His clothing is also found inside the vehicle. ISU asked students to contact Bloomington authorities with tips about Jelani. Over the weekend, students distributed flyers seeking information. Jelani's family set up a GoFundMe account to provide resources for the search. Dakara Bolden, Jelani's sister, organized the fundraiser on behalf of Carmen Bolden Day, Jelani's mother. Carmen also announced a $25,000 reward for any information leading to what happened to Jelani. The GoFundMe account is still active as of the time I uploaded this video. Now, if you would like to donate, I'll place a link to the GoFundMe in the description box below. The Bloomington Police Department released information about Jelani's last known whereabouts and asked for information about those who saw him or the vehicle. Carmen and the others searched the area around Beyond Hello Dispensary for clues. Carmen pled with the public regarding Jelani's return. If you want to drop him out at a hospital, on a corner, anywhere, just drop him out. I come and get him. I just want my baby back. I don't care about nothing else. I just want him back. I don't want to know. I just want him back. If you got him, just think about it. Would you want this to happen to you? Would you want this? To, would you want your mom to feel like this? Would you want your brothers and sisters to feel like this? I just want my baby back. I just want my baby back. His brothers and sisters want him back. Authorities find a body just off of the south bank of the Illinois River, east of the Illinois 251 Bridge in LaSalle County. Officials say that it could take weeks to identify the body. 
Bloomington police released a statement saying that they're still actively investigating the case, including collecting and analyzing physical and digital evidence, as well as interviewing witnesses. The LaSalle County coroner identified the body found on September 4th in the Illinois River as that of Jelani Day. It took approximately two and a half weeks for his body to be identified, even though dental records and DNA samples were provided to the coroner. Authorities said that the cause of death has not been identified and is pending further investigation and toxicology testing. Jelani's family wrote a heartfelt Facebook post concerning the identification of his body. Let's see and hear what Bloomington Police Officer John Furman had to say regarding the identification. I couldn't put myself in their shoes. Um, I, it, it was just tough. Um, I'd want to know the answers, good or bad, um, and start the grieving process. So I think it's good in that aspect that, um, you know, his body was identified. Of course, nobody ever wants to go through that as a parent, um, but you know, you have some closures where, you know, where I grew up, um, one of the a missing person was, you know, missing for five years till they located his body. Um, and that's just something that's tough. I mean, it's tough all around, but um, it brings some closure. Um, you know, we get some details out there. Uh, but again, it, it's just a terrible situ situation all the way around. Um, again, I, I couldn't put myself in their shoes, um, feeling how they would feel. So I know it's improper saying it. it's it's good that we um, were able to identify his body, but I think it brings some closure and helps them, um, you know, it helps the entire family um, get some answers. Uh, I know I was waiting for some answers too, and I know that they will be as well. A report by the Chicago Sun-Times stated that a private forensic pathologist conducting an independent autopsy found that organs were missing from the body. The corpse had no eyeballs, only sockets. The river's water had run her course, soaking the body through and through, the story said. The family's private forensic pathologist could find no brain, according to Carmen and her attorney, no organs, no liver, nor spleen. I'll place a link to the full article in the description box below. A commemoration of life was held for Jelani at Denville High School Auditorium. During Jelani Day's celebration of life, his four siblings sang a tribute backed by a community choir. The report of missing organs quickly began to make its way on social media, with many calling for justice and saying that it was a case of organ harvesting.
the Change.org petition was created, asking for state and federal authorities to investigate Jelani's death. Now, as of the date I uploaded this video, the petition has nearly 30,000 signatures. If you would like to sign the petition, I left a link in the description box below. Not only that, on 10-14-21, Cam Buckner, member of the Illinois House of Representatives, wrote a letter to Peru Police Department Chief Robert Psyka, Psyka, I'm probably pronouncing his name incorrectly. Anyway, he wrote a letter asking for the Peru Police Department to allow the Illinois State Police Division of Criminal Investigation to immediately initiate a lead and lead an investigation into the disappearance of the death of Jelani Day. Let's see and hear what House Representative Cam Buckner has to say. The current investigation has included some unsettling discrepancies and inconsistencies, including with the analysis of surveillance video and the securing of the crime scene and his vehicle, among other issues. There have been multiple autopsies and an independent pathology report done, and the results have raised more questions about Jelani's death. Jelani was laid to rest yesterday in Danville, Illinois. But my conversations with his family indicate that there have been no answers to their most pressing question. That question, what happened to Jelani? Since Jelani's appearance, disappearance, the investigation of what happened to him has been handled and coordinated through agencies in both McLean and LaSalle counties, making this a multi-county, multi-jurisdictional case. The search for his remains included six different law enforcement departments, including dive teams from other municipalities as well. I believe that this case rises to the level that specialized resources, skills, and attention are necessary to properly move forward. And on behalf of the family, I have requested that the Peru Police Department request that the Illinois State Police Division of Criminal Investigation head up any further investigation. The family has been through an amazing amount of pain, of hurt, of trauma, and has played out in the public arena. And this family has been forced to relive the pain, the hurt, and the trauma as every day passes with no semblance of success on Jelani's case. He deserves better. This family deserves better, and I know that the better is attainable. It is important that we do whatever we can to provide answers, justice, and closures for the Dave family and for his mourning community. It is important to this family that we not only say his name, but that we also be his voice. I ask that this body take a moment of silence for Jelani and that this be the last time anyone is silent about this investigation and justice for Jelani. Jelani's burial took place at 10 a.m. at Spring Hill Cemetery in Danville. So guys, here's the latest update that I have concerning this case. Unfortunately, the FBI have not taken over the case. However, Jesse Jackson and his civil rights organization known as the Rainbow Push Coalition is involved in assisting the Day family with trying to receive answers and justice regarding Jelani Day's death. Let's have a moment of silence for Jelani. And guys, please don't forget to hit that like button, that notification bell button, and also please subscribe. I appreciate you guys watching and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye.